Hey, what's up guys? This is Brad with Despite Fitness and uh, I've said for a little while now that I wanted to do a video on programming. I, uh, I shot a video on programming but the whole thing ended up being like 40 minutes long uh, which is a bit long. So I'm going to do a Cliff Notes version and try to make this as quick as I can. So um, the whole idea behind this is just to give you uh, a glimpse, basically a, a look at what I did for my program uh, leading into my meet which happened at March 25th uh, at um, Milton, um, Florida, and um, at Bending the Bar. Anyway, so uh, at that meet, I had a 2,000 pound total, which is my highest total yet. And the, the meet previous to that, I'd, I'd had an 18-18 total. Um, so I was able to put quite a lot onto my overall total. Some of that was a misnomer because I, uh, I missed my last deadlift by tearing my bicep. So truthfully, I, I probably could have had a little bit higher total um, back in July, but that's neither here nor there. So um, getting into this, um, we're going to kind of describe and lay out the, uh, the program and kind of go through some ideas about how to program yourself. And of course, if you have any other questions, you can always comment below and I'll, I'll try to get back to you. So let's go ahead and kick off the intro. Okay, so uh, real fast, I just want to have a couple caveats. So, you know, one, I'm not a, a strength coach, never been trained or anything like that. So this is all stuff that I've learned over my years of lifting and stuff that I've seen from other people. Uh, specifically, Chad Wesley Smith and his Juggernaut system. I follow a lot of their stuff online on YouTube, as well as read the books and whatnot. And I really like the way that the uh, kind of the methodology is. So I templated my program kind of off of that. Um, also that this is a powerlifting um, program so it would work very well for anyone that's looking to get a little bit stronger but maybe not focused on powerlifting uh, but it would be particularly good for powerlifters and then um, there's the the third part of this is I understand that there there's some potential of me not maximizing my training potential with this program because I really only hit um, a major lift once a week um, with any amount of uh, you know real vigor so you'll kind of see that in the program as, as a display it so in, in, actually let's go ahead and I'll splash it up right now so uh, one of the feedbacks that I got after I shared this program with a few uh, strength conditioning coaches and some other lifters is that I had minimal variation manipulation meaning that I didn't have a lot of variety in the workout I did this specifically because I felt like Having a sports specific training would be more effective for me. It would give me more sport practice. And uh, I didn't have to mess with all the variables of the different bars and different, uh, you know, different setups. And I didn't have to try to figure out what my, my maxes were with that so that I could plot my percentages appropriately. Um, if you have the time to do so or the inclination, then obviously that's up to you. Um, so it's just understand too that there's very little variation with this program. But I think that's a good thing. Now, um, with this program, there's a defined pattern. So, you know, as you can see from how I have this uh, program laid out, the, the pattern is essentially the same week in, week out um, with the sets and reps. Uh, it's very logical and, and kind of laid out. And there's also a logical progression with this. So as I continue through time from the beginning of this training program toward the, you know, the culmination of the training program where the I actually go compete, um, I, I progress logically through the duration of the training program. So that's also something that you're going to want to do. When developing a training program, you're going to want to make sure that you have a goal, right? So, you know, for a, pro for a powerlifter, ideally that's a powerlifting meet out in the, in the not too distant future that you can, you know, train and get ready for. Obviously, you have to make sure that you have enough time to get ready for that, that event, whether it be 8 weeks, 12 weeks, 16 weeks, whatever it's going to end up being for you for a training cycle. Um, you know that's kind of individually based or just based on how the calendar falls for you but you want to make sure that you have enough time to prepare for the meet and then uh, once you have a meet and you know that you have time to prepare for it the best thing to do is backwards plan from the date of the event to where you are today and that way you can you gives you exactly how many weeks you have and you can lay out your uh, plan accordingly there is um, something considered with variation versus specificity. I kind of touched on that already. For this, I kept all of my, um, all my main movements 
uh, very specific. I didn't, I, I didn't include a lot of variation, um, but in terms of having variation, uh, it would be better to have more variation the further you are away from the meat and then get more and more specific the closer you are because you know you want to make sure that you're good with the events that you're going to perform. Um, you know you don't want to uh, start doing a whole lot of uh, different types of squats right before the meet because you're not going to do those when you actually compete. And then also intensity versus volume. So um, it, for, for, for the purposes of this program I start out with the program with a high, a high amount of volume and, and a lower amount of intensity um, to try to get myself um, into hypertrophy and as I progress through the program I um, increase the intensity and I, I lower down the volume um, just because it, you know I wouldn't be able to, to handle uh, a high amount of intensity and a high amount of volume for very long so you got to keep that in mind for laying out your program this this program has three distinct phases there's the hypertrophy block the strength building block and the peaking block and the hypertrophy block is the, the idea is to build muscle tissue. Um, you're working with something between the, the range of 8 to 15 reps, 4 to 5 sets uh, for that main movement. And then you're looking at your, um, your strength phase. That's to try to teach them that new tissue that you're, you've developed through that hypertrophy phase to exert more force. In that, you're probably going to be somewhere in the ballpark of uh, you know, 4 to 7 reps, give or take, and something like 3 to 4 sets. It's going to be less sustainable to have you know too much volume in that phase because you're going to be more intense in your uh, weights. And then there, lastly, there's the peaking block, uh, which is to uh, kind of gauge your strength and um, and and prepare your body uh, for the meet. You're basically giving your body those cues of what you want it to do, and you're also, like I said, gauging that strength so you have an idea of what to expect going into the meet and, and can kind of place your numbers and. Uh, lay out a plan for the meet. In there you're dealing with one to three reps and one to three sets. And you only stay in peaking phase for a very short period of time. Maybe four to you know four to five weeks, probably at the most five would be I don't even I don't think I'd run peaking for five, but um, some people may. Um, Alright, so there is some guesswork. So in terms of laying out the program and figuring out what your percentages are, you have to perform a little bit of guesswork to figure out you know the numbers that you're going to use. A good idea is to take a previous meet, uh, whatever numbers that you use, as long as they were PRs, maybe take those numbers and add a little bit extra on, and plot your numbers, your your percentages that way. Um, if you've overshot and guessed too high, you'll figure that out pretty fast because you won't be able to keep up with the workload. And if that happens, you'll have to dial it back. Um, so for me, I used um, one main lift day per event. Um, with an aux day the day after that main event, right? So for example, you can see that my Monday was my squat day and then Tuesday was my auxiliary squat day. And the reason why I did this was to hopefully aid in recovery. I, I felt like getting in there and getting that tissue to move a bit might uh, help me recover um, as well as you know bring some, some blood in and hopefully uh, push some of that lactic acid out there and try to minimize the effects of DOMS. Um, now, with only really exerting uh, a body, a body group or a movement really once a week, um, that's kind of where I was talking about there's a potential that I was not maximizing my training. Um, but overall, I feel like I did a pretty good job uh, because I essentially added almost 200 pounds to my total and um, it was doing pretty good. All right, so I'm going to put up another screenshot of the uh, program. You can see it in its entirety my hypertrophy phase, my strength building phase, my peaking phase, and then that last week before the meet, I take that, that week off and basically just kind of hang out, chill out, replenish, try to uh, decay fatigue, and get myself in a good place so that by the time meet day comes around, I'm ready to get after it. Um, and then one more quick note, um, you know, you can pause it and just see how I've laid out the program for percentages and reps. Um, you know you're more than welcome to copy this or emulate it or do whatever you want to do with it, manipulate it as you see fit. Um, you could copy it, do a screenshot, and then you know build your plan accordingly based on that. Um, I do want to say with the auxiliary days, auxiliary days were exactly that for me. So it was uh, auxiliary movements to uh, one kind of help me get a pump and uh, kind of aid in recovery, but then I was also picking movements and maneuvers that I believe supported 
my main movement, right? So on my auxiliary squat day, I performed movements that I believed aided in my squat. Um, everything that I did, I had a reason to do. I did not pick any movements at any point in time that did not have some kind of a purpose or um, didn't, didn't benefit the overall um, end state. So for those auxiliary movements as well, I tended to stay much lighter, um, choosing somewhere between 12 to 20 reps and as many as three to four sets, uh, again, just to kind of create a pump and you know, get some movement so that I could uh, hopefully defeat uh, DOMS, uh, delayed onset muscle soreness. And overall, I feel like the, the program worked pretty good. All right, guys, that's the video. Um, yeah, that's the video, that's the program. You guys can screenshot um, or pause and screenshot where I've uh, displayed the program so that you can copy it for yourselves if you so choose. Leave any questions or comments below. Uh, I'll be sure to get back to you if you have something that, uh, that I can answer for you. And I appreciate you guys checking out the video. Um, like I said, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any friends that are interested in lifting or interested in getting into lifting uh, that you know and I don't, Share it with them. You know, maybe this uh, this conversation about programming stuff might be something that's useful for them because that's that's one thing that I found for a lot of newer lifters is they're not quite sure how to program themselves. I feel like this program is pretty good for just about anybody. Um, it's tailorable to yourself. Um, you can manipulate it as you see fit. And having done it myself for more than just what you see, I actually ran this program for just shy of a year in all essence. Um, and then, um, you know, it, it worked out pretty well for me. So essentially I'm doing uh, more or less the same thing with some, some variations in there. Um, um, yeah, so with some variations, that's what I'm, that's what I'm using to lead into nationals uh, for 2017. So hopefully I can have a good showing and uh, do, the, do, you know, do my best meet so far. Uh, that'll be my, my profound hope and expectation is to outperform myself. And if I happen to outperform some other people, well, that's cool too. Um, remember, you can also hit that alert button on the channel so that as new videos come out, you get alerted as they come. And, um, and yeah, I think that's probably about it. Um, yeah, any other questions? Anything I forgot, which I'm sure there is. Um, I might post up the longer video um, just because I have more dialogue and more conversation in there, and you can check that out at your, at your leisure and kind of skip around and pick what you want out of it. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, um, I guess that's it for now, guys. So remember, no matter what it is you think you can't do, train despite. Thanks for checking out the video, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Later.